me trying to back out of this driveway last week, oh. do you, <laughs> yeah. I realized yeah. very quickly that I should have not been driving with my neck condition because I couldn't turn. You guys, I think it took me like nine minutes to get out of the drive. I'm not exaggerating. Like I kept, I was going to like hit the flowers, hit the side. My car was about to shut off like, bitch. Put it in park and have somebody do this for you. I couldn't turn. Look, I, you put me in a very uncomfortable position because I was I had to back out so you could back out. So I backed out and um, I was waiting for Rob. So I just was kind of parked and I just saw the, like the back of your car come out <laughs> and then go in. And I was like, oh yeah, it's a tricky. It's like kind of a crooked driveway. I'm like, should probably need a, a, a retry on that. So I'll come back out, go back in. So I kind of like a slower one, and then I go back in. And then I was sort of hit with this sort of, um, this is where we're at in 2020. Let me see if I can tie this all into everything. I wanted to get out, park and get out and help you, but I I, I figured that was uh, chauvinistic or like, I would, not I would be saying, Jamie, you can't drive. Women can't drive, you can't <laughs> drive. I figured, you know what, dude? She's a powerful woman. She's empowered. <laughs> And she can do this. No, I was injured. And, and then it incapable. took another three minutes <laughs> yeah. of backing out, I, coming yeah, back in. It was but you got it. Lo- it was embarrassing. I mean, it, it was it was actually more fun because I knew Kasim was watching the whole thing and waiting <laughs> yeah. in the middle of the street to pull back in for me to pull Your out. Your face when you you, you finally <laughs> made it. I couldn't even speak to you. You're like. <sighs> <laughs> I'm gonna go. So you found out you don't have a brain tumor? I don't, yes, it's 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 negative. Um, Would you get a scan? No, I had. I went back to the witch doctor, chiropractor. Like you think they're yeah, bullshit. Yeah, something's up with those. And guys. he yeah. scraped me, pulled me, adjusted me. So what we figured out is I'm a stomach sleeper, and I sleep like my head, like you know. <laughs> the terrible worst positions you could ever sleep, but I've slept that way slept in my way my whole life, so I didn't think it would be an issue. But I've also become a teeth grinder lately because mm-hmm. I catch myself during the day all the time doing it. And um, but at night you can't. So I happened to be probably what we think happened was I was sleeping in that position and grinded my teeth. And if you put your hand on the back of your head and clench your jaw, like you can feel and it like it like twisted and compressed on the nerve here. And like I couldn't correct it no yeah, matter what, it. so it was. I like, knew that was the problem. Did you? No. Mm. Um, no, but I've really effed myself up sleeping. I think that's it's a. Is thing. that this is a this is a real sign of age that I fucked myself up so bad sleeping. Yeah. Well, it's this good. Is a, this is like an old person problem. Now, when you say the chiropractor scraped you, what is that? He takes a tool, like it looks like a knife, and like literally as hard as he can scrapes areas. I look like I had hickeys like all over the place. Mm. Sexy. Are you sure this isn't just a uh, cutter hitting you because you <laughs> talked about on your mom's house that you punched him in the face and now he's getting back at you? I actually did tell him that I did tell that story. It's well, so, okay. I have so many questions. Go ahead, Cass. What do you I want? just want to say you guys knocked it out of the park on your mom's house. You were both. We had a great time. You so know, when fun. I was telling Rob, when I'm a fan of a podcast, mm-hmm. And they have a get the guest portion is always the part that I like because uh, most of the time it's just somebody plugging a book or another podcast, sure. which is what we're doing. Um, but <laughs> it, it, it's just a guest that takes away from the flow and the chemistry of the main people that do the podcast. Mm-hmm. The beauty and what happened with you guys is that Rob is such a super fan yes. that it was just like an extended version of, of the first hour that they typically have. And then you got to provide this sort of like, um, it was like a, a nice bright light in an otherwise like very dark cave of a show. That's just that show. Which is I kind just of had what, no idea what was going on. Like which, I had no idea what anyone was yeah. talking about. And they they serviced me with all of the like to all of the information and video. There and is footage another that language that's spoken yes. on your mom's house yes. that Rob speaks. You know, and I yeah. I. Every once in a while, Rob will show me a video of like, dude, check out this dude. And like, you know, and then I'll start saying like, yeah, we a patty. You know, I'll start doing <laughs> one of them. But like, he speaks the whole language fluently. Like, yeah. do you have any comments on, on our Instagram that's been like, hey, keep it high and tight, you know? Yeah. And like, yeah. It's okay, uh, mommy. Thanks, jeans. You know, yeah. it's, it's yeah. 
Yeah. Welcome I, if you're if you're just coming from your mom's house. Thank you for checking out our podcast. We we can't thank you enough. Um, and I just wanted to say it was it was so great. You guys, it was were, fun. Were, were so funny and and really just made your way into the show in a very like organic, natural way. Didn't seem like you were there to do anything else except just to hang out, which was nice. That was yeah, that and was that's it. what I I felt like I was there. Yeah, for, you know, yeah. I was, yeah. I'm just going. I saw somebody said. Um, like oh I, you know it felt like like one of the fans of your mom's house was like I felt like I was on the podcast because yeah. he's a fan and I was and that's how I felt like I was so excited that's cool. like I showed up at I left 20 minutes early and there was like a police helicopter chase that made me had to go another way and I didn't know where I was so it took me I showed up at 1201 and I was like I can't believe I'm showing up this late yeah I was one minute late <laughs> And I was like, I feel like such a loser, like uh, you know, like I was. I wanted to get there like 15 minutes Aww. early, see what was going. I was. They couldn't have been nicer either. They're just such a cool couple. And as soon as I left, uh, Christina sent me a text message, and it was the video of the guy shitting his own balls out. Yeah, Wait, you showed what? me that. You want to see it? That was rough. Well, that's what? a yes. If Jamie, you hesitate, what you the hesitate. Heck does you gotta. That mean? Right, we're doing. We're doing. Don't just yeah. Just let her. She's about to experience. People from your mom's house are probably. When was the last this. time you ate? I just had a Reese's peanut butter or a peanut butter cup or yeah. a whatever cup right. of chocolate. Enjoy this butter. Let's. Uh, okay. Be ready on that face. Hold the phone down so that they could see your face when okay. you see this video. All right. Someone posted this? No, no, no. Christina just sent it to me because she couldn't, she can't show it on her show and she wouldn't show <gasps> it. Oh, God. <laughs> That's crazy. Is that what happens when men poop? <laughs> well, now you got to explain. You got to explain what's going on um, in this video. No, this gentleman shoved his own balls into his ass. How do you do that? And, well, you have to have giant yeah. balls and, and a loose I could, ass. I couldn't up, do it. Up in? He just yeah he shoved them. He shoved his balls up like they were Benoit balls or like anal beads, and he <laughs> Jamie just thought, popped them right Jamie in. Jamie thought that might happen every time we shit. <laughs> He's like, is that what happens every time? You see your kids shit; they don't sack. shit their own balls not out. Standing under him while he poops. No, but I mean, you you know, no. The but would you imagine your your son's balls just got sucked up into their asshole right before they shit I don't every want time? To imagine my Let's son's talk balls. about yeah your kids' genitals some more. Can I say something that's like? I feel like I'm, I'm already regretting this. No Perfect. regrets, dude. Perfect. Let's do it. So Bo's at an age, obviously, of like a lot of curiosity. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. You guys, I'm talking him into bed the other night. You and grabbed he your starts tip? No, I told you we he did that to my Q friend, though. No. Here. Oh, okay. That's Get ready. Well, I'll tell that story first. So this tells you where he's at. So my girlfriend's over who has very large boobs a couple of weeks ago. Which her, friend is this? My, yeah. one, of my close, one of my close friends, Lindsay, who has, her two kids were swimming with Ugh, in the backyard. Yeah, I, so we're all doing like a social distance. He hates the name, name, but he loves the boobs. I would love, yeah, no, I I would probably get a photo of this girl so I know how to stay and where, when to stay away from this person. From you Lindsay? show me a picture of your friend. So I put okay. her in my do not look at list. Ah. She's sitting there like talking to me, telling a story and Bo like walks up to her and like he locks in on her boob and I'm kind of clocking it and she's talking, telling a story and it was like this like fucking urge, wearing? just a black t-shirt, like this urge inside and he just like grabbed her whole boob and like squeezed it. Yeah. And we were like, she just started laughing hysterically because it was like so uncomfortable. I'm like, Bo, you cannot do that. And he's like, I'm sorry. And he was like laughing. Like he just, you know, he's at that age. He's looking at boobs. Like are things are different. Natural, big naturals or? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And bra, no bra. I'm not entered. If you're not going to talk, I'm not going to talk. Ooh. So... Let's just all sit here for 60 minutes and not say a fucking word. Anyway. So I'm tucking him into bed. And See what he you do, starts, Cass, when you hold back information? hysterical laughing. Like he, hysterical he starts laughing. laughing. And I'm like, like the major giggles. I'm like, what's happening? What's going on? What's this about? He's like, I'm just, I'm just. And I'm like, what? Finally get the words out. He goes, I'm dreaming and wondering if your vagina smells like cookies. I was like, What? Turns out he heard one of his older cousins call a vagina a cookie. Nice. And he got confused. But then in bed, I think he was just like recapping his day and just thought that that was fucking hilarious. 
And then, of course, I start freaking out. I'm like, you don't talk to people about their private parts. That is private conversation, including you don't think about my private parts. You don't think about anyone's private parts but your own. Wow. Right? See, I, I, heard, a, I heard a pickup line this week, which is it's the corniest shit. You should never use pickup lines for your guys. But I heard a good one this week. And I, I think Bo had a better one. That's a good I'm one. Dreaming if your vagina smells like cookies. I mean, if you're at, so sitting at a weird, and it doesn't. Right? If you're sitting at a bar, <laughs> probably and a, not. And a guy says no, that to her. you, that's come on. You're going home with him. He's like, baby girl, I've been dreaming and wondering if <laughs> got that, that Mrs. Fields pussy. That puss smells like cooks. Oh, you, now no, it's so got much that more BJ's Pazuki pussy. I literally <laughs> ran into my bedroom to tell Cutter. I was like. And he's first of all, he laughed, but then like ran into Bo and he's like, Yo, where are you hearing that shit from? Like, talk to me about this. Dang. You have to get to the bottom. What do of you it. do? Cause you don't want to make like too big of a deal, but you also want to like shut that shit down. Yeah, you don't want his you don't want to like traumatize him when he's in this because it could it stage. would it'll do something to him when he's older and in the bedroom with you know, sure. Well, and he, you don't want to be like, no, it smells like vinegar. I know? need Chips Ahoy, a whole sleeve of them. <laughs> To get off. <laughs> Jeez, yeah, that's going to be man. his thing. Yeah, now, but huh? now I'm like entering into the stage of like his, his like genuine curiosity. And like we're stuck at home. He doesn't have school and I stuff. I don't know about you, Rob, but did you pop boners at early age? Because I. Do you remember when you popped your first? I, I don't remember the first, but I remember having them like when I was young, younger. Mm. I don't remember my first, but what I'm Maybe thinking. Maybe it was the of... doctor that molested me. What I'm thinking of now, I think we have an email about that. What, what I'm thinking of now is, is that how s weird sexual things come with people, right? To where like, mm -hmm. you know, there's some guy on the internet who's like, I jerk off to co cookies and like I come on, on cookies and this. And yeah. is that how it gets like, yeah, I don't know. When I think of vagina, I think of cookies and then no, with your mom. No, I, I don't know. I think, it w I think it's more like I was trying to be more conscious of like, not making him feel bad. Yeah, that's smart. But also, also that's you don't think of your mom that you don't think about your mom's vagina. Speak yeah, for yourself. Yeah, yeah. Like a, a year ago, I cut back. I, I was like, you can't see me naked anymore. Uh, just a year. You know what I mean, just a year. When ago. he was like four, he's, turning uh, five. Yeah, he's now fourteen. So <laughs> go ahead, um, read that. Cash, okay. you got an email about your. Uh... Um. Yeah. Okay. So. Whew. Okay, so I don't know how many podcasts ago, but there was a story I told about having to go see a doctor about why I peed a lot, especially in the middle of the night because I was going to outdoor school. Camp. Um, it says, uh, subject, Cass, you have some poopy prostate exam. Uh, your poor story was terrible, <laughs> but I would like to tell you that many males with an overactive bladder have an enlarged prostate so a prostate exam would not be uncommon to check the prostate gland, but as a poor 12-year-old, I'm sorry you had to be alone for that. Mm -hmm. I'm a female and had to have the lovely finger in my ass to check for an active bleed from my gastrointestinal tract. As a female who does not do the backdoor thing, having a huge man with large man fingers violate my ass was traumatic for me, and I was in my 30s, and my mom was, in, was with me in the ER. So how, <laughs> however... Uh, she, however, was far from supportive and laughed after, after I had the exam and the doctor left the room. Damn woman. Anyway, I just want to let you know I am sending 12-year-old you a hug because in my 30s that shit sucked, so I can't imagine being 12. Love all three of you. You guys crack me up. Definitely have Dre on more because, oh my God, the conversations you all have. Take care, Adrian. Um, yes. Thank you, Adrian. And that's so funny because last night I went over to my parents' house and my mom, uh, she said, I need to talk to you. And I said, what about? She's like, this, uh, your podcast, I ha listened to it. <gasps> and I was like, oh, I don't want to talk about it. Because I don't know what she's talking about. I don't know if she's talking but about. But it's all bad. <laughs> I don't know if she's talking about the flashlights. I don't know if she's talking about, uh, you know. Um, Wait, say, let's all say hi to Kasim's mom. She's listening. Hi. She listened. Hi, mom. And uh, she used to do movie hi, reviews on my, mom, old, on my old show. Um, and she's like, uh. Yes, this is, I saw the one you talk about the doctor. And uh, I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, don't worry about that, mom. She's like, no, I just want to tell you it is okay because the prostate is what they check. And that's what she was essentially saying in this email. My mom wanted to make me feel like it was normal and yeah. I wasn't molested. I think I know I wasn't molested. But also, mom, you weren't in the room. 
and I and maybe I needed you, or maybe maybe she was like, I don't want to see my twelve year old son's that's penis ties and it into you, holes, yeah. So I'm gonna walk out. Having my mom I would, there well, might I would make stay a stay there and look away. Yeah, I think would have been. And then my if call. the doctor said, "Oh, it looks like you got some poopy in there," what would you have said as a mother? It's where it goes. Comes if the from, doctor so was probably a child molester, he'd probably be even more excited that you were like, "I'm just gonna stand here and look away." It'd probably get him off even more. Oh, like, oh, yeah, dangerous. yeah, like, oh, this is fucking. Oh, God. Yeah. I, I wish this like email that. didn't slightly turn me on. So wait, here's but here's my question is like, were you honest, Kasim, when your mom said that or were you bullshit, Kasim, and then come on the podcast and you're honest? Where did you say, hey, maybe I needed you or was that just podcast talk? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't. I don't think I needed her there, but like maybe in that moment I did. But did you say that to her when she said it? Were you like, no, hey, no, no. See, I told that her to forget Kasim about it. Kasim is one way in front of your face. Right, right, right. No, no, I told in, her to uh, forget yeah. about it. I, and hmm. I, do, I don't care if she was there now as a 36-year-old man, but when I was 12, you know, maybe having my mom in the room, because I think the part, what I, the reason I thought it was kind of scandalous is because it was just me and this old guy. You know, sure. if my mom was in the room, then in my head, I'd be like, oh, well, she was in there. She would never let anything bad happen to me. And so since she wasn't there as a kid, you know, as I got older, I'm always like, did that guy, you know, was he getting, was he getting some? <laughs> Jamie's loving this. Was this guy getting some of my ass and I didn't know? You, know? you said your ass tastes like a cookie. Did he say smelled or taste, Bo? No, he did smelled. not say taste. Oh, my God. If he said taste, I would have been in fucking therapy. Hey, Ma, what's your puss taste like? Long. Oh, wait, so wait. Speaking of trauma and all this stuff, I really want to know what ha what is the aftermath after you punch your husband? What's what's right away? Like, take me. We're, we're and by the way, I've thought of this. I know you have security cameras in your house. I oh, will yeah. pay. Oh yeah, it's on the nest. Somewhere. If you have that footage, I will pay, <laughs> and Kasim will pay half because mm -hmm. that's this pot. That's what mm -hmm. we do in this podcast. Mm -hmm. Whatever he'll pay, I'll double it. Well, I'll tell you the story so you can just envision yes. it in your head. I'm in the three or four in the morning. How long ago? Jack is like three or four weeks old, five weeks old. I was hoping it was Jack and not Bo. Yeah. <laughs> so this makes it how many years ago? Two and a half years yeah. ago. Yeah, yeah, because on the way here, we were talking about this, and Kasim is like, well, it was a while ago, and Jamie's done work on herself. I was like, I hope it's Jack. Yeah, so yeah, we no, know like that it wasn't that ago. long ago. The, look, the, this excites the, me, the dude. moral of yeah. the story is postpartum Jamie is like not who I am. Like, it's a very dark time. And it's a serious thing. It it's, afflicts a I'm, lot of women. When I tell you Jack didn't sleep for the first four months of his life, he slept maybe 20 minute pops at a time. Like, it was A lot like Da Vinci. Fucking hard. That's how Da Vinci did it. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Took little naps. Anyways, carry on. Well, maybe Jack's going to be an incredible artist. Mm -hmm. And I paid the price for it. Mm -hmm. So did Cutter. <laughs> so I was nursing him and Cutter and I were in an argument and I don't remember why it was happening in the middle of the night as well. Like, I think he might have gotten up to, like, help me with it. And I'm like, I fucking got it, you know. And when we fight, he doesn't stop. Like, he's, like, wants to keep talking. And for me, I'm somebody that, like, I sometimes need, like, a really good amount of space to, like, yeah breathe because you if you, we keep talking you're going to keep riling me up and I can't I can't get off especially when I'm in that space mm -hmm. and I kept warning him and I kept warning him, I'm like dude get back like get and I have the baby nerd on my booby I'm like stop get like get the fuck back like stop and he's like no Jamie booby and I just in my rage like right hook bam and he did the like the guy. Where did it land? Closed she's, fist. She's, she's pointing right at her cheek. Closed fist. fist. Wow. Cheekbone. And you're a righty. Much. I'm a righty. So yeah. Good. Have you hit a person? Let in me the tell face you, before? I've never punched anyone in the face before. I've slapped somebody at, for work. Yeah. But I've never punched anyone in the face ever. I don't like it. I didn't feel good about myself after. I was shocked, to be quite honest. Um, as was he. Um, it was a very low moment. So that's that's the yeah. story. If this is being played in a courtroom one day, I just wanted to say to the judge, this is not what Jamie's like. 
She's no, not, no, this, this is, is, a, not this is yeah, like. this is this is just a real representation of what lack of sleep and, you know. But here's what I want to know. I want to know about the aftermath. I want to know. So t- what, he was in minutes. the wrong in the argument. He was very much in the wrong. And the next day, but what, was I like, want to know, right? Like you punch him in the face. Yeah, he now was like, what? A, he like swallowed it and walked out. And then I was sat there to like sit and like live with it. Which was rough. And I want to say we didn't speak for the... I think I put Jack in his crib and like slept on the couch in his room. Like didn't leave. And then when Cutter took Bo to school and then he came back and was like, I'm not going to work today. Like we're going to talk this out type of thing. See, he's a good dude. That's a good move. Yeah. Because I would have gone to work. this bitch. I would have hit on the secretary. Would have gone for drinks after. Then I would have fucked my friend Steve. (laughs) <laughs> I, you know I was telling Cass before that I so I just finished the third season of the show and Sopranos by the we're way we're talking yes. about Sopranos Sopranos and yeah, I gotta check this show out it's so good and I realized like especially like seeing the footage of you and I from your mom's house whatever and seeing what people are saying I, I it must really freak people out to see us together I think it's like it's it's really jarring for people. Like when I see um, Chris Maloney and Mariska Hargitay like together, because I love SVU, I'm like, yeah, I love this so much. They're right. friends. So I think it must really trip people out to see us together. I Yeah, I mean, I, w- I would imagine that uh, most of the time people think like, oh, actors just don't, you know, once they sh- do a thing, they don't really. Yeah talk or connect and not only were you guys in the same show but you're also brother and sister and then your off camera relationship is very brother and sister so it must mm-hmm. be very pleasing to sure, people. Sure, sure, sure. It's satisfying to know that it's a very like not Hollywood thing, you know? It's like a nice sort of yeah, you guys were kind of forced into this thing together and you spent that time together and then after you could have did anything and lived separately and never spoken to each other, but you guys share this thing and it's a real bond that you have. So it makes the show and everything seem more, more authentic. Re- act, that, it's like when you see the people from Friends and that they're really yeah. st- all best friends and do holidays together. Yeah. It makes you feel like the show like had more meaning. Right. You know, like you're saying, it's more authentic. It feels like it's almost real. Yeah, I think it's nice. Yeah. And it's no, you know, people always wonder what the hell Rob's doing. So it's they nice just to, to see anymore. Rob. Well, I I was gonna say I went to um, the last premiere of the show Girls just mm-hmm. because I was looking for some to be honest. Mm-hmm. And uh, the one of the uh, Lena Dunham she gets up to make her speech to everybody in the crowd or whatever, and she's like, I can't. And she said to her best friend on the show or whatever, she's like, I can't wait for the next 10 years so whenever we're asked we can pretend to be close to each other you know so she's basically saying like that's what people do after a show right they pretend like oh no we're so close but then it's like oh yeah we haven't spoken three years and so they so people are used to hearing yeah no we're close we're close but then when it's like oh yeah we're hanging out or we're doing the podcast we're over here doing the show it's like it yeah i think it definitely yeah yeah, yeah. takes it to that yeah um we got a fat stack of emails Give me some. This one is, this is the fattest stack, and these are fresh, I think, right off the Your Mom's House. Wow, the retouch. One one quick question, Jamie. How long until after you punch your husband do you have sex? <laughs> uh, um, I don't think I was in the clear to have sex yet. I think I still oh. had like a few weeks. So you're just, he probably got a blow, I think he got a blowjob. Oh, wow. All right. I'll take a fucking, <laughs> Cass, you want to punch me in the mouth and suck me off on the way home? I got to suck. I gotta suck you off. <laughs> He's single, Gabby. <laughs> no, uh, that meant edit, not anything. I meant, I meant edit in. that out, not keep that shit in. Anything Gabby. else? And we're, of course, we're leaving it all in. There's no edits uh, this show, but it's just okay. You're reading, or am I reading? Sure, I'll read. <laughs> we up out of here. Uh, That's we up out of here. We up out of here. Hey, Hitler. Since discovering Pajama Pants back in March, it's become one of a select few favorite podcasts of mine, along with H3 and Yes, Your Mom's House. Rob and Jamie's recent appearance made me come in four strokes. <laughs> Didn't think I was They're speaking the language, right? Yeah. Yep. Watching Rob on 
YMH was like living out a fantasy of being on YMH and actually being funny. Jamie made for a fantastic co-guest because she didn't know anything about the show, but she could still hang. Let me tell you, as a YMH fan, it was a great episode. Keep those PJ pants low and loose. P.S. I love Kasim the Acid Tongued Arab, too. Never stop road raging. Thanks. Have you been called that before? The acid Norm, tongue. Norm McDonald called me called ah. me the acid tongue. Really? Yeah. I feel like people want to know about that, right? You you did you hosted a show with Norm McDonald and people kind of didn't know if you guys were joking or serious or you it seemed kind of awkward, right? Uh the, well, the whole thing was awkward, yeah, but my experience with Norm was like terrific. Oh, we, good. We, we were great before the show, before I like met him for the first time and then after it was great. He was nice to me the whole time. I think people thought it was um, the the show started like coming off the rails, and I felt like I had to like kind of pull it back a little bit. But like I should have just let Norm continue, and I think I did. I think I was like mostly just laughing at things Norm was saying. Yeah, but it was great. I mean, I had a I had a good experience about it. That's good. And I and I think Norm is a legend and will always be a legend. And he's like a, a personal hero of mine, minus the gambling and. Uh, hey, there's nothing wrong with gambling. Huh? I said there's nothing wrong with gambling. Oh, uh, well. Sports are coming back, baby. I've watched some of my be best firing. friends. Yeah. You you know what's interesting about this? I heard that before uh, Corona, you could only bet, and this is, I'm tying this into me and video games, you can only bet on like two esports, and now you can bet on like over 10, I think 13 esports. Do you ever see yourself as a fan of regular sports and betting ever placing a bet on esports? What's esports? You mean how many mean times have I bet on esports? You do bet on esports. I've bet. I've what bet games? on everything you could think of. No, this is because I'm. Is I'm so, I've bet on. I'm Jamie's into kids. esports. Yeah, yeah. I'm in, esports are like video game sports. Oh. And so to me, that's like the future of sports. So what they do is they no, simulate. No, it's not that. It's not like it's ro- kids playing Roblox, but it's like well, it could be, I guess. But it's you know there are competitive games and there are people who train just as hard, maybe not physically, but train just as hard to to be as good as they can be at a game mm. that people do when they play football or mm-hmm. soccer. Mm-hmm. You're not a fan. But well, actually, you're married to a real crazy. athlete. So. The way that I was gambling on esports during coronavirus was not the way you're talking about. The way I was gambling on it was they set up a simulated game. So it's a fake game. There is no two people playing because then it can be rigged, right? right. If, you're, if you're betting, they probably, I don't know, maybe they do or they don't. I don't think they'll ever take big bets on something like esports with two people playing because then I could just go tell some video game kid like, hey, lose this match and I'll give you fucking a million dollars and I'll go bet six million dollars in, yeah. in Vegas. But when they simulate it, there's no way of cheating. So what they do is they say like, hey, it's the Super Bowl and we're put it's a Packers against Bowl and then they just let that game play out. And I've watched an entire game while betting on it. Uh, fake game during like maybe month two of Corona and I was really losing my mind. Yeah, I could see that. There there are games that are like five on five and they're, you know, in countries like Korea and the the esports stars there are bigger than anything. You know, they're like the they're so like our Brad Pitts. All right, know? we got. Wow. All right, I'm gonna read one more email before you do. Hi, pajama bands crew. Three months ago, I had zero masks to wear, and now I'm on own 18 masks from varying companies, including the quality ones from Disney Star Wars. I just received my mask from Braddock's USA using the promo code PJPants, of course, and these are by far the best and most comfortable masks I own. The material is super soft, flexible, and the elastic ear loops don't feel like they're ripping your ear off. I only bought a starter pack of three, but I'll definitely order more and replace the rest of the 15 masks I own. This podcast is amazing. I love hearing about all your lives. Here's his pics with his Braddock USA. How cool is that? So if you don't know what we're talking about, um, the debate is over. Wearing masks in public is proven to help keep yourselves and this others protected. This is not protectives. him, by the way. That's, oh. this that's, is so, the, guy. This that's is... the guy from the company, but... Oh, yeah. What's his name? You said he's a fan now, right? Josh? Right. Josh. Well, yeah, we got him a as a... real email, by the way. The question is a real email. We got him as a sponsor, and now he's a fan. I really Boom. like this one. We could just do that like 20 more well, times, Well, where can Bryce? you find... Affordable, reusable masks that you can wash that you don't hate putting on. Well, our friends at Braddock USA have solved with their daily face covers and scarves. They use premium upcycled t-shirts and jersey material to create super soft and eco-friendly face covers that offer protection. So when you go to their website, BraddockUSA.com, you'll see that they already have great prices. But for a limited time, they are offering an additional 20% off with promo code P 
PJ Pants. Again, that's 20% off your entire order with promo code PJ Pants at B R A D D O C K U S A dot com. Braddock USA dot com with promo code PJ Pants. Yep. How cool. I wear mine every day and, and I and I rewash them and, <laughs> and reuse them and, and they they're the softest. So soft. Softest masks. So available. comfy. So do I, and why this is my favorite is because when I talk which I do a lot. It doesn't, I don't have to readjust it and constantly mm. be tugging on it and this, it yeah. just fucking stays there. Yep. Which is what yep. I like. Um, Sounds very yep. summer. So please support the people that support the podcast. Thank you so much. For 20% and then should off. we just should we just talk about Manscaped too yeah. in the meantime? You know, they're here to provide you the best tools for your grooming experience. Yeah. The Lawnmower 3.0 is the best hygiene tool for the modern man. Because of their ceramic blade and skin safe technology, your snags will be reduced while preparing yourself to post quarantine life. Who knows when the hell that is, but get that perfect package 3.0 and you'll be ready. Tell them about the perfect package, Cass. Well, okay, so it comes with some stuff. It comes with the trimmer. It's yeah. a lawnmower 3.0. I don't even fucking need this. Hey, yeah, yeah, I'll test ya. <laughs> the, the crop preserver. Yep. Correct. That's ball deodorant. Yeah. That keeps your balls smelling fresh, not like cookies. Not like your downstairs. I shouldn't have told this story. This no, you should have. Good. Haunt me. I feel like I'm gonna get some like. No, it's good. And the crop reviver, which is toner <sighs> for your balls. These things all used to be for your face at one time, and then we realized why aren't we treating our balls like how we treat our face? Yep. So. Um, and you can subscribe. You can subscribe to, the peak to make plan. sure. Yep. You make sure you're getting uh, fresh blades every three months. Every three months, you get a tote. Um, I even have some Manscaped underwear. You know, so Cute. there's. Cute. Yeah. yeah. I look great in them. And I'll for guys you. out there who have a crush on Jamie, old Cookie Puss over here, she uh, loves Mrs. shaved Fields balls. Over here. She loves oh shaved my balls. God. She likes them smooth, and oh so does God. your girlfriend or mother, if so you're get, getting it for your father. And uh, weird, yeah, get twenty percent off and free shipping with the code PJPants at Manscaped.com. That's twenty percent off with free shipping at Manscaped.com and use code PJPants. Thanks, your, Jamie, uh, and your, thanks, your Manscaped. Will thank you. Um, I have this one email that I want to... Um, what? It's another like email. Subject like, oh, I like God. your show, but wish Robert and Jamie would listen to themselves and loose the like. Now, here's the thing. If you're going to email a show about how we use words and how we um, aren't doing it up to your standard, use the correct word, lose. I've been seeing people use the word loose instead of lose. All so really? much. Yes. It's probably some Freudian shit. They probably aren't too tight in the you guys in the this, cookie area. Quick te- this is just for you guys. When you lose something <laughs> or you want somebody to lose, it's L O S E. Mm-hmm. If you want uh something to not be as tight and it needs to be looser or it, it needs to be let loose, that's L O S E. O-S-E. And if you want to know what you are, you could just add an R to the end of the word. Yeah, you're a looser. You fucking looser. Uh, you should have like one of those, like, the more you know. And yeah, yes. Natalie, but we appreciate, and I, and I hope you don't stop listening to the show because we uh, said that, but we appreciate anyone. You said anyone. that, we didn't say that. You no, said Jamie, that. Uh, Jamie specifically. Uh, and we appreciate it, everyone that sends it. Yeah, I hope we don't even if loose you as a listener. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Bryce. Nice one, buddy. Oh. Bryce always there for me with the last. Like whatever. Um, uh, uh, you guys talked about you both have the music channel on when you have sex. I want to yeah. know what what station. Do you think you both have the same station uh, on? I leave no. that to Cutter. He's the music aficionado. But what is it? Is it usually hip hop? Is it rock? No, is it, it's never hip hop. Not rock. Is it let me love you down? Yeah, I like R and B. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Or or some good like uh, pounding that cookie. some like Bonnie Ver like yeah. it depends what kind of sex we're gonna have. Wow, Bonnie Ver, I've never heard it said that way. Is that not how you say it? No, I, I, I guess I, it I don't is. know. I don't know. I say Bon Iver, but me I don't, too. I don't. Know. Oh fuck, Bonnie oh, Ver. I just embarrassed that be... myself. No, I, no, I love that. I prefer. I'm only gonna Can say Bonnie Ver. Can we look up how you're supposed to say it? Is he's it? just Either. a white guy. So it's not he's, like he's from some other, he's Bonnie, not Icelandic. Because it's not he, like Sigur Ross. I don't know that. I don't know if you know that band. I think they're mm-hmm. Icelandic, but I always like have to hesitate when I say their name. But that's the type of music I'll put on. Cool. Very atmospheric, yeah. sort of sweepy. Um, but they have a name that is, you know, one of those, it's like Bon Iver, but they actually are from another country and you could put an accent when you're saying. Right. But Bon Iver, he's just like some corn fed white guy, right? I'm into him though. Uh, yeah, well, I'm into sexy time with Bonnie. Bonnie well, if you're if you're worried at all about your um, the way you handle Bo, 
scarring him. I think I could make you feel better. Do you have that clip, uh, Bryce? Producer Rob. Have, uh, it's it's your favorite show, 90 Day Fiance, but this is, there is a, this guy is, this gentleman is leaving uh, his mom for like the first time ever to go to his girlfriend in Brazil, and this is how she says goodbye. My mother's taking me to the airport. She's feeling extremely emotional about me leaving. What, this is a doctor. Oh no! Oh, oh, here, here. No, here. no, I, I had out sweet. my way thinking, no. She actually just uh, oh, snuck oh, out no. and gave me a little bit of her hair from her comb to take with her. It means a lot. Um, that's actually something. It's 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 her hair. Very sweet of her to do something like that for me. I'll make sure I, I pack it in here. Give me your thoughts. Terrible. Disgusting. Where's I will never from? do anything like that. Ever. How fucking That's insane so is fucking that? Jamie, weird. you could sell your hair to some creeps. I think we should. I just you know, cut off put a like clump two of feet it? of it. I know. Don't you have a clump of it like in the shower every day? Sure. Well, that's yeah. what his mom said. Let's it was from the that. it was from her brush. Oh, and she her took it out and comb. she and she hands it to him and he looks at it and he goes, Ew, he's like, What is this dog hair? And he goes to like get it out of her. So she takes it back and goes to hide it and he's like, Oh, oh. And he takes it out of her hand. And I'm sure we'll play the clip on the on the show, yeah. but just to say, and, and he's like, he's like, that is so sweet. And he's so he's like overjoyed How with strange. The mo- well, I mean, look at I mean the people we're dealing with on the show. It but, is so fucking wow. could you imagine if your mom gave you a clump of hair when you were getting on a plane and you're like, oh, gotta pack this with the fucking toiletries. Yeah. That Ugh. is such it's one of my favorite I clips. I I want my kids. I'm not, I anticipate me not being the type of mom that's going to be like weird about my son with like what girl he's with. Do you know no, what I mean? Yeah. I'm not going to be that. Unless he's mom. like banging every chick in town, you might be a little weird, right? Well, yeah, I don't want him to be an asshole, but I'm definitely I I don't want him to have any other feelings about me other than like his mom. Like, I don't want him to feel dependent on me at all or like any kind of weird, like, take a piece of me with you. Like, yeah. No way. Fuck. No, yeah. Ugh. Are you the type of mom who's going to be like, hey, have your friends over all the time? Yes. And, okay. Yeah. Well, I would much rather it under my home, like right. at my house, when I know he's mm, safe selfishly. Yeah. Um, Slipping ayahuasca into their drinks. Hell yeah. I'm like, let's journey, guys. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't. I mean, you never know. I don't know. I'd. Li- I. I've always wanted to be the cool mom. I think you're gonna be the cool mom if you keep letting them grab your friend's tits. Yeah, that was dope. <sighs> that is that a thing little boys do though? Dude, I was clocked in. I think it was because I was breastfed, but I was clocking in on boobs at a young, young, young. Yeah, it's fascinating to them. Just you know, we talked about it in an early pod, but the decolletage. You know, just like anytime the sun is glinting off, you know, this part. I had a, a teacher, maybe this is why I love coffee, but I remember she was busty and she would lean over and, uh, you know, she always wore kind of like a button-up shirt that was kind of baggy, but I could I could see through the buttons mm-hmm. sometimes and she would always smell like coffee. And so now it's very, I... Like, visceral, like Yeah, I pour, I pour a hot cup of coffee all over my... Um, there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things, but I've always been a boob guy and it's, and it's always, it's always been. Is any guy not a boob guy? Yeah. There like are they some, don't care yeah. about boobs at all? I don't, yeah. and it's not necessarily really? the size. I don't care about the size. No, of, it's right. just a boob. It's a, it has a lot to do with nipple placement. It has a lot to do oh. with overall, um, shape in proportion to your body, in proportion to your body. Okay. Now here's the thing. I... Girls are always like embarrassed about when their nipples aren't hard. I love me a soft nip. I love catching a. Why would a girl be embarrassed that her you know, nipples like, not you hard? Know, you just you know girls like want like their nipples to. I girl a lot of girls have a thing about wanting their nipples to be hard. Yeah, it doesn't what? doesn't matter. But yeah. as a guy, it clues in to like oh maybe she's turned on. You know maybe they they feel like we like that because it shows that they're turned on. Now in seventh or eighth grade, I hooked up with a girl. She had inverted nipples. Mm-hmm. I had two one of those. little dimples. And you had, uh, I, I remember grabbing an ice cube out of the fridge and trying to coax them out like, you know, one of those cobras in a basket. That's was pretty she, advanced down for seventh this? grade. Seventh uh, grade? Did you I think that was eighth grade. I think she that was, was like, eighth grade. Yeah, let's get the ice cube out. Let's try it I think out. I was sexualized at a experiment. younger 13, age. 13, this guy's going into the freezer? Holy shit. I got an ice cube. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. And, uh, 
you know, it was it was a, a little bit of a it took some work mm-hmm. to get those guys out there. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. but if if that's you, do not be self conscious. We're just happy to even see bare breast. I mean, I think as a as a kid, you know, in your first few sets of boobs, you're just so just the thought of um, seeing an areola was enough to put me over the edge. But then I also sometimes I do am so like like when I see cleavage, I go, "What's your problem?" Like you're fucking 35 years old. Get old. It's like you're not even seeing tit. Like sometimes I just see. So I've been doing this new thing lately. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when I, this is good. When I work out, uh, I put this video on. Uh, so it started with me putting video on of people in the gym. So it's like I feel a little bit like I'm in the gym. You know, I'm watching people on the video. I play my music and then I'm watching up there. It actually started with me looking for music to work out to. And then it came with videos. Right, right. And I'm like, oh, this is good. This gets me more, gives me more energy. Then. I, this girl kept popping up on these videos and I'm like, this is the hottest girl I've ever seen in my fucking life. So I looked more, it's like, oh, you might like this video. And there are hour and a half videos of just her working out. So now that's what I watch when I'm working out and I play my music off of my speaker. She's going for an hour and a half on the TV and like, I'm fucking feeling it. I'm in, I'm working out. I got, are these... you doing the same things as she's doing? No, no, not at all. Oh. This is weird. I have, so I have, I have yeah. heavy, I have heavy weights uh, now, so I'm like feeling myself. I, I, it took me a while to finally get the, the weight. And then I go cook, and sometimes I come back and I see, like, must like with porn sometimes, I come back and I see her on and I'm like, what's your, I don't know. I just feel like I'm like, what's your, because like, you know, it's all like just shots of like her cleavage or she's like in the mirror and she pulls her underwear. Oh, God, I'm going to fucking go crazy. But she pulls her underwear down a little and you just see like that little roundness of like, and the way she looks at the camera and this chick is so fucking hot her name is like alana or lana something but i don't think this part's weird i think the weird part is that in the beginning of the story you said you put on videos of just people working out while you so work he could out feel like he was at the gym well here's what here's here's actually how it happened no. i was looking for music to work out to on youtube mm-hmm. and then when you found the music it came with an hour and a half video <laughs> of people working out so i would play that uh, on my tv like someone then, just set a camera at a gym and it's no like it's the all like clips view? it's oh, all okay. different like different no, no like that, it's like that's, your view as like, if you're in it's the like gym. security cam <laughs> of, of a gym somewhere and you see like the clanking no 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 it's like put together clips of like, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger, like, or people like the heaviest lifter and they're all lifting, it's like, the to rock, like up. doing the super hot chicks, like all this shit. Wow. And I was like, oh, this, cause I was working out alone in my apartment for yeah. three months straight. Mm-hmm. It was like, oh shit, this is something that's giving me a little. Hey, yeah. man, whatever you gotta do to get that extra rep in. For real. So what I'm, what I'm saying is sometimes I'm watching this video and I just see something as small as like, she'll do like a deadlift or something and she'll bend over and you just see that cleavage and you're like, holy shit. But then you're like, what's your foot? Like, yeah. it's a lot, like it's it's her <sighs> skin mushed together and I'm so like, <sighs> that I feel. Yeah, like, it's I'm like, natural. It's in us, I dude. Yeah, it's I would, I would not, I would not feel bad about that I because every guy apparently feels that way. It, it's just very natural. It's Look a, at my feel, son. It's not that I feel bad. It's almost just like, I'm like, really? St- We're like, animals, dude. Yes, you are. You have to honor that part of yourself. That's what I think I I have come to this place lately because I felt like I'm very split in half. Like I'm all these different people in my life. Like I'm the organized mom and then I'm a creative type and then I'm like, you know, a stoner. stoner. And like, <laughs> but I'm like, how do I integrate these and honor all of them? Because yeah. It almost gets to a point where, like, wherever you are, you feel like you sh- you wish you were d- the other part of you in that moment. Does mm-hmm. that make sense? Yes. Like, if I'm with my kids all the time, like, fuck, like, I just wish I was, like, being creative and this and that because this is, like, a lot. Or then if I'm, like, sitting there being creative, I'm like, I- I'm somebody else is watching my kids. This is wrong. So, yeah. like, I'm trying to figure out how to, like, honor when I get to be all those things, but also figure out how to, like, integrate them all. Does that make sense? It does. It does strangely make sense, and it's, I guess, a, a practice on just how to be in the moment and enjoy what you're doing. Well, I called the therapist. I, I can't I'm do it. I'm starting to go to therapy next week for the oh, first yeah? time in a very, very long time. Just you, me. You know, I just got a new one, and I'm on my you know, third week of this new guy. Love him. Great. You know, I really, I really, really like him. And uh, it's all over Zoom, 
Mm -hmm. So it's super easy. Yeah. You know, I like the, I think even if it was available to go there, I don't think. You would go? I don't think so. Why? Just because I'm, I still feel like I'm connecting with the guy and I don't have to drive to Beverly Hills or wherever he's at. See, I like, I think that therapists can really read body language. I, I purposely sought out, use a wide angle, sought out a male therapist because I don't need sympathy. I don't need um, coddling. Mm. Like to me, I oh, I'm really trying to be conscious of my likes now. Uh, To me, I want someone (laughs) that calls me out on my shit. So you think that's more of a male? I do. Yeah, I do. I I want somebody to be like, here's what you're doing, Jamie, Mm. and here's what you're gonna do, Jamie. That's what my guy does. I love it. And I feel oddly like. I could be more honest with a man. Does that make sense? I don't know. I just. Um, well, if it's another woman, you know, there's always in the back of your head, like maybe she's judging me because she's a woman and I'm a woman. And maybe, maybe. there's a part of her that's like. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. But then as if it's a dude, are you ever like, oh, this dude just wants to fuck me? No. That's you. You never. You rarely cross that line. <laughs> you rarely cross that line as a. Is there, is there uh, anything that you could tell us right now that you're excited to get into a therapist's office and tell him or talk to him about? Uh, let me look at my notes section. Oh, yeah. Speaking definitely... of that, do you how many notes do you have in your phone, Cass? Like how many – do you use the notes app? Yeah, I do. How many do you have? They, they, they tell you at the bottom. Okay, we're going to do this. Yeah. Okay. Because I had it on the agenda, but Jamie just brings it up. So if you go to – People could do this out there too. What is well, I just 95. Through, I just deleted a whole bunch. I have 31 right now. I have now. 95. Right okay, now. I'm not going to say how many I have. <laughs> well, yeah, you just probably never delete delete them. No, I do, and I, I still have 937. I have, because I have I have stuff for the podcast, questions for the podcast. I have, like, my, every workout I do, I track. Like, I do, I, I yeah. since making lists in my life, my life has gotten so much better since yeah. I started. Yeah, that's that's yeah. part of what I liked when I did the bullet journal method, which I don't do anymore because I'm a. It's very hard for me to be consistent with something. But the there's a whole method on list keeping and how it to or, it, implement it in your life and how to organize your life in a way that makes making progress not seem too overwhelming. Yeah, um, see, I like lists, but they can start to like. Uh, they could start to uh, fire up that type A in me that I don't want to be too loud mm. in my personality. So I find journaling is, which I don't do as often as I should, but journaling to me, it's more yeah. getting my thoughts out. It feels like much more of a release and feels like I, I did something. Yeah. Like, oh, I processed that. That was sure. real. It's there. Journaling is a very, it's out very, of me. yeah. And there's a part of the bullet journal method, I think, that yes. allows for journaling. Yes. But absolutely, getting your thoughts down from sort of like a cloudy, convoluted, uh, down onto something that's, it's filtering through mm-hmm. your hand onto this pen through and onto this paper. And it's like, crystallizing what you really yes. think and yes. it's it's good and it's good to go back and read that stuff and sometimes and, you could be like oh that's bullshit yeah you idiot and yeah. i and i like lists because sometimes it you lose that feeling of when you're leaving somewhere going like did i forget my keys you know like when i leave going food shopping or i leave going to do something i'm like wait did i did i need this thing so as soon as I need something from food shopping, bang, I put it on my yes, on a list and yes. then I'm just done with it. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't look back at it, I don't worry about it, I don't go, oh wait, yeah, I have to get fucking this. I have to make sure I get, you know, garbage mm-hmm. bags or I have to it doesn't it's and then the best is when I as soon as I'm done getting my shit, when I walk out, I don't have that feeling of like, wait, did I need garbage bags? I'm like, nope, it's not on the fucking list. Yeah. Yeah. You know, feels good. Yeah. Love a gar- gar- love a grocery list. You know, I got to go to the grocery right after this and then I'm I I just go in with no plan, which is terrible. Mm. I go in <gasps> hungry and I go in with no oh, plan. The yeah. worst. You're a daredevil. You are. You're yeah. crazy. I'm crazy. Wild cast. That's what they call them. Should we read another email? Wild wild yeah. Here. Um Give me one. You Jamie, you asked one. me to bring up something. Oh, yeah. The Young Star Awards. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what made me think of it. I think it was when you were talking about on your mom's house how I cry. All, like, I'm so emotional. <laughs> I have this very specific memory. So Rob and I were nominated 
after the first season of Sopranos for the Hollywood Reporter Young Star Awards. And it was like a whole red carpet and this like mini award show they set up with the stage. It was really cute. We were there with our moms, whatever. And Rob and I both won. We were well, the, we got there and they were sitting, they sat us both in the front, front row. row and we oh, were yeah. like, huh? Yeah. Like, we and it was the be... first award to come up was, you know, yeah. best young actor and it was Jamie in a drama. First. So I went up and I got emotional. <laughs> and I remember like trying to stop from crying. And I came off the stage and the first, Robert was right there and he was like, are you crying? <laughs> And I was like, no, no. Well, because I could crying. see that they had Krispy Kreme donuts in the back. And I was like, dude, fat. if I win, do I get to fucking grab a Krispy Kreme donut? I'm a, and I see Jamie, expected Jamie to walk out with a donut and said she's crying, like all He's emotional. I'm like, crying? I'm like what the? I was like, oh, no, I'm not How many crying. Krispy Kremes could you put down when you were a little fatty? I, the same amount that I could put down now. I could, I could go through 12 Krispy Kremes with no <laughs> fucking problem. Wow. Give me a f- half gallon of milk and a dozen Krispy Kremes Well, the warm. thing is with Krispy Kremes, they just kind of evaporate in your mouth. They They're the best. They just dissolve. Yes, and I was from do. East Coast. I don't think we had Krispy Kremes yet. And I remember when the first time one opened up, it was- On the same was, street as Suede. Remember? Yeah, well, the first one opened up for me was on 86th Street because that's uh, where I grew up. But- on the same yeah yeah and they would have hot fresh ones at like one in the morning right when you're you know yeah that was when i was getting this way you were right, leaving yeah, and i was leaving. yeah we'd, we'd high five on yeah. on the way out yeah new york man new york nightlife i mean you'd i would there'd be times you come out and the sun is up all the it's time crazy. the hardest i've ever partied has been in new york, in new york. yeah mm-hmm. i remember there was one time like perfectly i was walking out of this place called show and it was on 43rd Street or 41st Street. I remember it was one block off of Times Square. What a name for a show. Great. And the show. reason it was called show is because it was in a theater mm-hmm. and everybody would party where the seats would be in the theater and there was a stage. And let's just say, thank God there were no camera phones back then because I would be up on that stage and oh. some weird shit has happened up on that stage. But uh, I was walking out of there and I knew the owner, so it was like seven in the morning, we're partying until up in the office. And, oh my God. And I walk out with a vodka cranberry in my hand and I turn to the right and I just see like two cop cars. And I'm like, fuck. So I just take like behind my leg I, is where I have the cup and I just drop it and then like with my foot, kick it like a fucking soccer player or something to make it go the other way. And I start walking and the cop is like, hey! And I'm like, oh, fuck. Fuck. I'm like, I'm going to go. To, I'm all fucking coked out of my mind. And uh, the guy goes, pick that up. And I was like, yes, yeah, sir. Sorry, sir. You know, and I just fucking pick it up. He's like, don't fucking do it. You know, whatever he wanted to yell at me. I, I let him get it out. And I just, okay, thank you. You know, and just kept well, through through the cup in the garbage, got in the cab. I was like, thank God. Oof. You do not want to get arrested, coked uh, up. And uh, I, I probably wouldn't have just, I probably would have just got a ticket. Or do you get arrested for drinking in public? I, I was no definitely idea. way underage. Yeah, you can for sure. You can you can get arrested for peeing in public, and then they give yes. you an indecent exposure. I've seen it. Attachment, and then sometimes then you got to start. I don't know if this is true, but do you have to f- file under like a, a predatory sex thing, like as a oh really sexual predator if you get caught peeing in public as, under I an indecent exposure? I dated a guy law? once that was when he would get very, very drunk, would just pee in places you're not supposed to pee. Did we like date? people's closets. Yeah. Um, I, I knew a kid like that too. He peed on a TV in a hotel once. Yes. And he was sleeping, well, woke was up, st- peed on it, went back to sleep. And everyone yeah. saw it, everyone watched it. Well, yeah. this person I was with, we were staying in a hotel, walked out down the hallway, just pissed in front of people's doors yeah and then i was woken of him banging on the door to get back into our room still kind of like drunk sleepwalking and can i tell you it's hereditary because his brother he had an older brother and we were it was somebody's like birthday and the older brothers were around with the younger brothers and everybody started talking and we're like yeah well he did this and they're like oh his fucking older brother does the (gasps) exact same thing whoa weird brains are weird yeah uh so one time I was going to a Pantera concert with a bunch of my friends. Sick. And so we would, cool. there was this uh, construction site that we would sneak into to smoke. And it was one of the greatest cover, like cover spots to smoke because no one could see you. Mm-hmm. Nobody would be there after like six o'clock at night. It was right by the 59th Street Bridge. So there's like 25 of us or something. There is, you know, a lot yeah, of us, yeah. at least 20 people. 
And usually it was only like three or four of us. Now we start getting loud. We're drinking 40s, everything. And I had a thing where uh, I would always tell my friends, I could just throw up on command. <gasps> like if somebody says, hey, throw up, I could just puke. What? Yeah, I don't need to Perfect put my finger Perfect for a Pantera my... concert. Right. So we're drinking everything. and this. My friends always would talk about it. And they'd be like, yeah, he says he could do it, but I can't. And they're like, then go ahead, throw up. And I just fucking turned and went, bah! <gasps> and just started fucking puking. All, and they were like, oh my God, <sighs> you know, like you could really do it. I'm like, yeah, I could just, I could just throw up. How did you so, learn that you could do this? Is that an eating Just disorder thing? Being young? No, I don't know. When I was young, I was in the hospital a lot because I had really <laughs> bad asthma. And I just Jesus. remember I would throw up just any – like if the doctor was like, let me look in your mouth with that thing, throw up. And let me – if I would get – uh, IV sometimes they would stick I was so fat I think they would stick me like 12 times and by the eighth time I'm just like blah, like throwing up so I realized how to make myself throw up and I always said I could do whatever so now we leave there where mm -hmm. everyone's like oh my god this fucking crazy throw up and we get on the train to go to the concert and four of my friends all while we're waiting for the train just start peeing on the wall so three undercover cops come <laughs> grab each one of them I forget if the fourth guy started already but the, the funny part of the story was they're grabbing these three dudes and one of my friends is smoking a cigarette on the platform. They're like, okay, you're all getting tickets. While this is going on, one of my friends is so drunk, he turns around, doesn't realize this cop thing is going on, nothing. Just pulls his pants down and starts peeing while the cops are like taking everybody's information to it. The cops don't see it, but we all see it. So we're just watching him pee and we can't say anything. And we see the pee just start running down. The, the uh. fucking liquid is going and we're all just standing there like, oh my God, he fucking turns around, pulls up his pants, but and then he just not, totally did not get caught. It was, it's one of my favorite memories. Whoa. I love it. And we were all just like, oh, we're probably- what an artist. Yeah, I mean, we're probably 15, Ignorance 16, or, so maybe 17, 18. Wow. We got such a fat stack. I think we got to save them for the next one. Do you have one? I have one. I mean, yeah, I like I when you read. Have to read this one. No, okay. I love your voice. Oh, hi, Jamie Robin Kasim. I first started watching The Sopranos when I was way too young. And as a result, I only really understood AJ and Meadow storylines because the mob stuff flew right over my head at 11 years old. <laughs> the mob stuff? <laughs> okay. My yeah. God. For that reason, you two will always be my favorite characters. The strippers were also oddly comforting to see after watching people get beaten to death. <laughs> yeah. True. I okay. can see yeah, that. I can understand. It's like a mommy. He's like, P.S. I have seven people in my closet right now. Yeah. <laughs> I have a question good. about acting. Are sex scenes <laughs> really awkward? I'm sure they try to make them as professional as possible and whatnot, but I just can't imagine them not being incredibly uncomfortable. Uh, yes, they're very How many awkward. have you done? Um... Maybe like four or five. And outside of The Sopranos. Yes. Yeah. And you know what's funny? I don't feel like I've, I haven't done one in quite some time. And I feel like I would be much better equipped now as a, like an older woman to do one because I'm not as self-conscious. Mm. I think for me, when I was young, it would be like, oh, people can forever see what my sex face is like, and I don't want them to see that. So it was never, I couldn't ever really surrender myself into the scene or really just let myself go. Now you'd it was, be like, Rub I was that very self-conscious. And it worked in my favor, I think, because you know, a lot of them were like young girls having sex and most girls are, are self-conscious when they have sex, you right. know? Um, I have a technical question. What? When the guys are wearing those little like nude mm -hmm. banana hammocks, you've done it? I've had to do it. Okay, so yeah. I wanna know what that's like. And then I wanna know like, was there ever a part of you where like you're kind of like, you're into your- I've never had it, I no. You're like, well, I wanna see what his- Nope boomer looks like you know no, have you ever heard I, from I, other actresses them actually having sex yeah, in a scene yeah really yeah, i've heard of that too yeah, yeah. i just thought that was a no-no unless it was him. like marlon brando on like uh the f f on the waterfront oh, i forget which movie but it came out that he like kind of raped somebody oh, <laughs> kind of raped his co-star um last tango in paris i think and he, I've had i've had makeouts where Bryce I'm like, was like oh, oh yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm like <laughs> oh this is, was fun but uh, I've never had, maybe it just didn't line up that I had a co-star that I was like sexually attracted to when I had to do a sex scene. Mm. See, I've had both. I've had a sex scene where it was awkward because it was like 
so bright. It was on Sopranos. All the people were people I had mm-hmm. known for so long. This, but then I had a sex scene where we forgot to say the lines. We just got like really when into it. You did it, yeah. And you did for no, real? no, no. We didn't have sex, but we uh. were we got so into it that so you're supposed to be having sex, uh, and then afterwards there were lines, and we started like you know messing around or whatever, Hell and then next thing you know like we just. Didn't say the lines, and some I think somebody yelled out. They were just like, "Cut it!" Or they, and we were both like, "Damn!" Like it, it got. And what? And wow. what? And you were wearing the little thing. So what I would do is I would get the they they almost look like boxers, like like clear. I wouldn't wear like the thong. Okay. Because that's only I think it's like they, they need to see, to see your, your right ass. your butt. So I would wear like the ones that looked like boxer shorts, and then I would take uh, an elbow pad. Are they nude colored? Nude color. Uh huh. I would take not that I have much to block but i would take an elbow pad like a softer elbow yeah. pad from like rollerblading or something and i would put it in front of me so i wasn't like so you your know, boner wasn't grinding in rubbing up against her sure. pus, yeah but you had a boner well i think uh it was not a full boner because the the because the pad was there but if the pad was not there forget yes yeah, she I would think, have been like this is uh yeah i I'm, think in acting she the, might have she might have been able to have dna evidence on oh, it good. please tell me because i i feel like the boner in the world of acting has it has a sort of mystical it's a kind of allowed because you're in the moment and you're doing the thing mm-hmm. but it's if like if you misuse the boner then it be, can become a problem i'm gonna shoot because uh, you've had I've, you've done I've scenes with guys ever, with boners for i don't sure. know honestly well, everyone's guys, always been so respectful yeah that i, I would I... totally be very respectful with you with a boner like <laughs> But it's Jamie, like a natural. I, an I artist, wouldn't judge anybody. Yeah, sure, sure. I, and I wouldn't be like, oh, I don't, I don't like whatever. Why not? Ah, no, no I, we should. We might have to get the girl on here who I had the sex scene with, and yes. she'll, she could talk about it. Yeah, you might have to DM her after this. Okay. Because I don't have the. Let's get her on. I don't have the Instagram. Anymore. And maybe we could give you guys a you don't scene have a number? to do. I don't think I still have a number. I haven't spoken to her in a long time. Mm-hmm. Well, let's change that. Yeah. I I'd say on married. that note. What? I think she's married. Yeah, I think yeah. she is. <laughs> ah, I can't wait to see who but it is. But still, she'll talk about it. She's, she's awesome. She's yeah, fun. she's cool. Hey, yeah. I want to thank um, everyone that's watched this uh, podcast, on who's come over and subscribed um, on our YouTube channel from your mom's house or wherever you might have mm-hmm. seen us. Hit the subscribe button. Click that notification bell. Hi, that way you know uh, when our videos go up. They're every Tuesday morning on YouTube and every Monday to listen to. And uh, yeah, hi mommies. That's part of the language, right? Hi mommies. High and tight. High and tight. High and tight is high also like we up uh, and technically we up out of here. Yeah, um, and we are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, that's it. I, you guys were great on the show, and I and I hope um, no people one's gonna stick be around. like judging my son and my relationship that he said that right. That's no, like, uh, well you you're, know what you're talking you know about what? real mom stuff. I think that's good. If they do, who fucking cares? You're right. You're Tell right. Tell them to suck. That I'll just bang. bring it up in therapy. Yeah. Bring so it up I'm, in therapy. Tell him to suck that toddler dick. You should go home and bake him some co- cookies and always keep the plate of cookies up above your you waist. You always take you know? it too far, Cassim. I'm just I saying, would, hold I it say, above your waist so he doesn't like connect always it. Always takes it like a little You just you gotta hold it up here. Bo, you want a cookie? Far. Let's reach up here and grab you a cookie. They don't come from down here. <laughs> yeah, maybe get a little like a Yankee scented candle chocolate chip cookie action. You know, let him, let him live his dream. Hell out. yeah! Okay. All right. Thanks well, for listening, great. everybody. You're my best view. (laughs) Like, bye.